Um, um, hello. Today I'd like to talk about an Irish person who really, you know, is an example of why it is not a good idea to emigrate abroad, really, if you're an Irish person, if you're in the media space, in my opinion. Because if you do that and you're not already famous already, you're, you're just going to be a horrible person if you do become famous. Because, my God, the worst Irish people imaginable become famous when they go abroad. Then you can't really become famous in Ireland on its own, so. Well, there's that. So, you know, there's not much you can do there, but, like, you know. But basically, my point is that, at the end of the day, let's talk about Graham Lehnan. So, let's dive in to Graham in this video. Yeah. I don't know why the audio isn't working. But I'll try and fix that. Right now. So yeah, let's get into the video now. Hello and welcome to Jumping Across the Pond and Exploring oh, Transphobia in a different pop culture place than the US for one. Pretty exciting stuff, huh? Mm. Graham. That's right. While it might be the same time period, today I want to consider the transphobic roots of an iconic Sorry. British anti-trans activist, which is the nicest way of saying it. The more yeah. realistic way of saying it is hateful bigot who made being transphobic yeah. their entire personality to such a degree oh, that it pushed or also hasn't made I mean... their entire personality away from them. Graham Linehan, renowned creator. I can, sorry, sorry. It is weird, actually, how like, I also like media outlets. Like, like yes, and you're like, I for, I remember I read my first when I first read about Graham Linehan being a transphobe. I was like, wait, is he? Is he like? Is did they like? An, did they put the anti in by accident? Like, is like, a, a, did, were they saying he's a trans activist? And I was going like, well, why is the anti? It's a weird one. Like, why are you calling it an anti trans activist? He's a transphobe. Like it's it's a, it's a weird one. Like just because it, it makes it seem like you're just like wait why is the anti in there, you know, what wait what? That's what I first experienced. Like wait why, why, what, why is the anti in there though? That that's a weird thing to have in there, isn't it? Anyway, yeah. So that that that's my that was my first experience. So. How long are people going to keep writer for up with these grifters? Father Ted, Black Books, and the one that people keep begging me to do a video on, the IT crowd. Now, if you are not either British or a nerd, then you probably don't recognise those I mean, too much. I'm not. But I think they really do represent British, the British is. comedy way of approaching minorities that we've discussed in depth with... Yeah, I mean, like, there's a couple other issues with Graham. To be honest, Graham uh, has has not has not really kept up his writing abilities um mostly american shows so far and i wanted to make this more than just an exploration of one episode of the it mm. and i'd like it if or Google a couple worked. of comments in father ted because of who wrote them because of how yeah. iconic Graham Linehan has become in the discourse around the trans debate in the mm. UK, and as a face of yeah. the male side of the turf movement, a counterbalance, one could say, to a person like J.K. Rowling, who has certainly been a lot luckier in regards to her career and family remaining intact despite everything she says and does and supports. Yeah. So the big question like, here that I'm I going to try and answer sorry. is not what Drop. is the trans repetition like in British sitcoms, because it's probably... Well, well, J.K. Rowling, J.K. Rowling has achieved a level of success within the transphobe turf movement that has managed to, like, basically, I think as well, though, the, the issue for Graham is that he's not, like, great at, like, writing. Sorry, Graham, but, but you're not, though, you know? Like, his most recent show, it's, it's kind of like a mid-tier, it's like, you know... It will work. People can watch it. But it's not, like, good. And it's also not iconic. 
like Harry Potter is Harry Potter good or not that's not really the point it has nostalgia so even if it's pieces of shit it doesn't really matter because you as a person read that when you were a child or maybe you read it to your children and that sort of instills a thing there where it's the kind of uh, internet culture thing as well where it's it's managed to achieve a thing where older people would have read it to their children now the children would have grown up so those little wood will will feel that connection and then those children so basically with these like two generations love it because it's got that nostalgia of came out around that moment there. And that means that it's able to achieve this thing where millions of people are able to have that nostalgia feeling. So it means that even even the quality doesn't really have to be good. It just needs to be there and it is there. So that kind of means that J.K. Rowling can continue to sell Harry Potter games and Harry Potter as a TV show. Even though, you know, when she tried to sell the last piece and where to find them... Once again, somehow the writing just declined. I think it's really an issue of when you become a certain level of wealth, you just don't really care anymore because there's no real reason to care. Like You don't have to sit down and go, you know what, no, that's not good enough because, you know, you're going to get paid millions either way. Like, at least if you, um, you know, at least if you have a feeling of like, oh, I want this to be good though for artistic reasons. But this is like, this is not artistic reasons. This isn't, this isn't a good idea. This is just like cash grab almost, you know. It's like, okay, a prequel. Okay, another show about life in the suburbs, whatever. It's like, yeah, it's just not, you know. So I think this, they, they are part of that, that, you know. But it's just that Dickie Rowling's managed to achieve the level where people have nostalgia will continue to purchase things it's just and, gonna get answered by itself yeah and as well you see like there's uh you know the uh stephen fry who if you don't know apparently is a friend of a russian lord so that that i i, I used to i used to relatively like the works of stephen fry yeah my opinion of him has greatly diminished greatly diminished you know because since the whole a couple of different informations come to me, sort of like you know, um, you know, the sort of you know when you see like celebrities, they do enjoy being around each other because they're fucking self obsessed and you know pathetic, but it doesn't really matter because well, you know, when you hang around each other like that, you you gain you know power, you gain connections, and you gain this sort of wealth that you can't really obtain if you're just sort of just doing your craft. So Jim Fry has uh, collaborated with like you know uh, Russian Lord. Um, and that has basically led to like an uh, undemocratic way of doing things, which is a, a very weird decision to make. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then as well, defending J.K. Rowling. I was like, yeah, I'm still going to survive. Like, that's, that's not, you know, come on, man. Like, you know, just kind of. I do wonder, though, how many celebrities like the people and how many of them just like their managers just like, no, no, you have a contract with them. Don't bullshit. No, don't do it. No, don't know that. You know, the BBC is known for general public, and if you're got a contract with the BBC, well, yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to know their contract. They, they're known to cancel the contracts. With people who are, you know, what? against. No. Instead, it's can we see the roots and foundation of the transphobic bigot that Graham Linehan became in his earlier work. Is there a clear and definitive way for us to know that someone is going to end up like he did? I think that's a far more valuable question to answer. It's also good because these British sitcoms like a total of 20 to 30 episodes each. So there is not as much to explore or talk about in each one. And I can make a longer video and sort of cover more bases by doing that, you know. All round, good idea. Now, to start us off, we need to start off slow, with the basic stuff from Graham's early career. Considering mm. the way that queerness is used in his shows like Father Ted and Black Books, which nobody has made. To be fair, um, with Father Ted and Black Books were a lot, a lot, um, a lot more involvement from other people. So it is hard enough to know what was written by him and what was written by other people. You know, so I, I think... His position, Father Ted, was that there was a lot less written there, I think, because, uh, you know, I know that the only person who wrote Father Ted was has, has worked in other things, and then and actually, and has actually got good stuff, you know. So there's two writers in Father Ted, it's just made, made any comment on. So is there even anything there at all? For 
God's sake, YouTube, please deal with this ad scenario. Where you Have just you got a presentation this. coming up in the near future? Oh. And you're not entirely certain about the. Okay, well, I know them. Not like personally, but like I've seen them as a celebrity. Kind of. Not really. So I don't. Apparently, this guy like um lives in a mansion. I don't know though. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, back to said video. Hopefully. You know? Hopefully, YouTube. Hmm? YouTube? Hello? Oh my, it's a wonderful platform, isn't it? Relatively good music, actually. So firstly, we have Father Ted, a show from the mid-90s, and Jesus Christ, that is so long ago. It's almost as old as I am. That is about a group of Catholic priests on an island in Ireland, and their attempts to keep the inhabitants in the fold, and to go about... Do I did think that was slightly weird, like, you know, the fact that, you know... It's it's an English, you know, base, roughly speaking, show, but it's all Irish actors and it's set in Ireland. How did they even pitch that, I have to ask? Like, you know England, you know the way you, you only like a couple of years ago you you, you, you were, you know, you were being banned to, to sell your media in Ireland. Well, <laughs> how about a show where it's entirely in Ireland? Okay, you know, I and it, it is, I think, one of the biggest shows, um, biggest successes Channel 4 has ever made, I think, has ever, like, commissioned. So, I, I think it, it didn't make back uh, a lot of its investment, um, you know. So, yeah. And some shows can do that, where they're just like, we're just going to... Doing their duty you know. during a time period when the Catholic faith was getting a little strained due to all those scandals that, if anything, just kept getting worse and worse over the years. Basically, it's a punishment sentence being sent to Craggy Island for these priests, as each one did something that was considered improper for the others, or was involved in some incident. Although, are they gonna are they gonna say what? Because none of it was really that bad, except for Father Jack, who is a serial sexual harasser of women, and is played off as not such a big deal. Well, I mean, Father Ted here, um, you know. Uh, you know, uh, you know, was uh, involved in defrauding charity money. So, uh, 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 you know, charity money that was supposed to be used to help children obtain medical help. Pretty serious, actually. You know that that's pretty serious. I'm pretty sure that was that. Yeah, because he's an old pervert, and that's his character. Look, it, it was the 1990s, women were barely people in sitcoms written by men. And when I dug into Father Ted, I mean, I kind of hit the problem of there just being barely anything to talk about. And I do sort of see why nobody was asking me to make a video on them. The closest I could find to anything in Father Ted was a comment by a few of the older ladies on the island about watching The Crying Game where they misgender the trans woman in the film because they thought they were a woman until the scene that revealed they had a penis, which makes them think they're a man, obviously. We always go on Tuesdays, it gets us out of the house. Oh, we saw a great one a few weeks ago, a crying game. Oh, it was brilliant. Oh, there was this great bit in it, you see, there was this girl, and then you find out it's not a girl, but a man. <laughs> but he got his lad out. Yes, he got his lad out. Well, you only see it for a second, but you get the message. But that by itself yeah. isn't too different to other shows from that same time period, and it's two incredibly well, old people Graham. who absolutely would talk like that or think like that about something that they have no familiarity with. Yeah, to be fair, they are on an island in Ireland. Ireland is a country that has a remarkable history of being so, not so accepting, but very accepting. And then, sorry to the person, but like, and then the English came and fucked everyone over. Now, obviously, I'm not blaming the English. They didn't know that the entire, you know, forestry thing was kind of an important part of the climate. And if you cut down all the trees, then it'll release carbon. I'm not blaming them for that. But I have to, you do, I mean, I'm probably sure that if, if Ireland was, you know, free and then they just, you know, wired their own country for the entire time, they would have cut down the trees eventually as well, you know. 
But the point is, they did cut down the trees. They were the, they were the ones who first started the whole logging industry. The idea of, well, let's cut down more trees than we need. Ireland was like, no, no, no. It used to be the way of like, no, no, we need a house. So we'll cut down enough trees to make space for the house. We don't need to cut down all the trees. We just need to make space. And then if we need more houses, we'll cut down more trees to make space for those houses. You know, that was the idea. That was so obviously, I'm not blaming English for that though. But one thing the English brought was a lot of sexism, a lot of all this sort of thing of like, no, this is how society should run things. And that is not what Ireland used to be like. Now, I'm not saying Ireland was fully like, oh, very progressive or anything, but like, it does, you kind of have to admit that Ireland was less progressive in the like mid, mid 20th century then, like, you know, in the, like, the 12th, 13th century. That's not great, is it? Like, yeah, not great. Thanks, England, for that, though. Thank you. Yeah, that's your responsibility there. You do have to admit that one, you know? So, fuck you. And uh, I don't know, I, I have to say, I think it would have been better if England just killed him, de Valera. Must would have been a much better, much better world we would have lived in. But anyway, they didn't. Let's get back to the video, YouTube. That's what we're doing. Mm hmm. And back with living on a rural farming island dominated by religion. Perfectly yeah. in character. And the show makes no comment itself on that particular insert. Yeah. We are not, as an audience, directed to see this as behavior we should emulate. It's just. In fact, you could make the argument that in some ways it is criticizing it because. You know, you have, like, the facial features. Although you could say that could just be the fact that, you know, they're listening to the story and then they're hearing about, you know, uh, private parts being on display and priests definitely wouldn't be... Well, uh, they wouldn't prove that. Just a story about a film that these elderly women saw. In Rockahula Ted, in an attempt to appeal to singer Nan Connolly, a parody of Sinead O'Connor, who you might recognise as ripping up a picture of the Pope on SNL and getting basically pariahed for the hot take of thinking that all the bad things the church did was bad and people should be noticing that. Father Ted Yeah, they did not like that. I, I, it's weird. <laughs> they did not like that. Caught up in this weird moment where the singer believes that a couple of dresses are for him midway through his speech about the island being more open-minded and willing to tolerate people's lifestyles. The joke being that it looks like he does cross-dressing. Oh, I don't know, but I like the colour of this one. Oh, I I'll wait for the, the uh, video to load. I just don't know. <laughs> well, uh, they're both great. I'm sure whichever one you pick, it'll be just lovely. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> you see? All sorts of alternative lifestyles catered for. Yet again, not that bad of a joke. And, and yes, it is kind of saying that the humour is him being perceived in a way that he is not. A way that presumably we are meant yeah. to think is strange or something that normally you'd be embarrassed by. I mean, yeah, I mean, in a way you can laugh at the bigotry of others though. Like, yeah, you're a fucking racist and no one likes you for that. You know, so there's that there, and then that's that thing which you... But coming it's like, off yeah, your racism shows, isn't good, but, like, you know, the fact that you aren't... At the same time, it's relatively not that transphobic. Would mm. be a bit weird in a show right now, but hardly equivalent to the sort of vehement vitriolic transphobia one would expect yeah. from Graham Linehan. What the fuck? Graham. Graham. Please. Please, Graham, if I see you dragging somebody out by their boots, I am going to have to call the police because that is assault. You can't just assault someone. Like, yes, this person is using the bat. Oh, okay, Ooh, okay, Graham, yeah, you're, actually, you're actually not allowed to do that. You know, even if the person was doing something wrong, you're not allowed to just abuse them. That's, that's not something you're allowed to do. The police are allowed to do that for... Some reason. Well, actually, you know, the police are not allowed to do that. It's just they did to get away with it. That's the thing is, like, there is police brutality laws. It's just that, like, you're not allowed to do that. And if you if you do that, I'll call, 
you. That seems like a bad idea to, to for the police to police themselves. Okay, I mean, yeah, it seems like it'd be better to have some better system. But like, yeah, you're not allowed to do that. But yeah, you know, it's just, you know, but on your cream, just don't do that because it's, it's not only is it like you know, but also it's like you know, it's not really legal for you to do. The episode that I assume people would take issue with more often is that of Are You Right There, Father Ted? The classic quotable one wherein Father Ted does an incredibly racist impression of a Chinese. Like, I think, though, that um, this is a more interesting thing because they are almost saying, no, 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 this is, this is racist because Dougal understands it's fucking racist. If the character is meant to be an idiot understands it's a racist thing to do, um, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's, it's that's person, not right. Which gets seen by a Chinese family, and the rumour spreads around the island that he is a racist, which he tries to dispel in many failing ways as bad luck keeps catching up with him, and making him look like Hitler, or having a bunch <laughs> of Nazi memorabilia around the house, or Father Jack dressed up in an SS uniform. It's well known for its scene involving a parishioner asking Ted, so here you're a racist now, father. To which the answer is... Kind of, sort of, yes? I hear you're a racist now, father. <laughs> what, what? How did you get interested in that type of thing? An easy jump, Catholicism into... Tell them a racist. Everyone's saying that, father. Like, the whole episode is dedicated to this idea that Father Ted is not really a racist. He was just making a silly little foolish caricature that got taken poorly. And then he kept getting taken out of context and misinterpreted. But at its core, yeah, he was doing a racism. And the mm, failure yeah. to acknowledge what that represents and what it encourages in his flock is a major character flaw. Actually seeing that story from that lens... I mean, Ted is not supposed to be a likeable character, really. Like, you can make char And the thing is, like, Father Ted does not end well. Like, the show does not end, like, with happiness. It's like, and then they all continued to exist. It's basically like, we're not going to make any more of this, but, you know, it's not a happy ending. They, like, tease a happy ending. And then, although, at the same time, they're almost like, no, no, this is actually not like the bait and switch. If you don't know the ending, it's like, yeah, we're gonna, you're, you're gonna be in a, in a church in America. You know, the country with all the guns and the gun violence. You know, you know that country. So enjoy your opulence, Ted. Just try not to get shot. That's the end. And then he's like, ah, uh, no, actually, I, I won't. I, 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 I'm fine, thanks. I, I'll stick. does make I'm me kind of think if that's how Graham Linehan sort of sees himself. Just someone who got criticised too harshly one time and then kept getting ragged on by people for all these things that were taken wildly away from their intended meaning. And so he had to begin openly attacking trans people all over the internet, directing hate towards them and... Um, buddy, you know, if you're going to be high on drugs, my advice is stay away from social media because, you know, any drug, if you're, okay, if you're recovering from a surgery, don't go on social media. If you're on, if you have, have after, you know, taking, after having a bunch of alcohol, don't go on social media. It's not a good idea, okay? You might, like, be with your friends and that, but, like, just don't go on social media because it's like you're, you're gonna you're gonna end up doing some things, and in my case is gonna be spending some money on certain things you may not like to actually spend money on. Joking about killing them, posting private pictures of their genitals to the public is past. Wow. Ah. Uh, okay. By the way, Graham, Graham, if you show up to the Nazis, they would kill you. If you didn't stand up to the Nazis, they would. See, 
So, so people might say, well, how about, Graham, you don't stand up to the Nazis, you do like an undercover operation, you know, like the people who tried to fucking kill Hitler, and they failed, yes, but had they succeeded, they would have, you know, and they came close to succeeding, by the way, they would have, they would have been able to end the war, most likely, and the thing is, though, is that they wouldn't have succeeded had they been publicly against Hitler. Dictators are not going to be like, yeah, man, I, I, I know dissent, although I do, I do have death camps for, okay, so that, no, no, that, that, that makes no sense, you know? So, first of all, you wouldn't set up the Nazis, that's not, yeah, but you would be against them secretly, that's what you, that's what you should be saying, you know? Because, Graham, once again, if you're saying you would have sent up the Nazis, you would have been dead. And good riddance. Sort of mocking them. Yeah, surely he must think he is still the good guy, or he'd be having some kind of horrifying revelation or epiphany right now about what he has done and where it has led him. Like that Nazi skit from Mitchell and Webb. Have you noticed that our caps have actually got little pictures of skulls on them? <laughs> I, I don't, so... Hands. Are we the baddies? Anyways, Black yes. Books comes to us a little later, starting two years after Father Ted ended in 2000, and running for another four years because Once again, British, co-written, so. British TV either ends you know. so soon, or drags on forever like Doctor Who or Coronation Street. I don't want to waste your time too much here on something that is even less relevant than Father Ted to understanding mm. Graham Linehan, because there is basically nothing tied to trans people much at all. There are mm. some queer jokes. I can think of one from Grapes of Wrath, where Fran believes that her date is actually gay because he seems too effeminate to be straight, which ends up kind of coming around to punish her in the karmic sense. I mean, a lot of black books is bad people being shitty and getting punished for it. The main characters mm. remind me a lot of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia in that regard. I mean, like, it's... But yeah, there is no foundational transphobia or homophobia here to really build a strong case for the question... Once again, he didn't write it ...that we're trying so. to answer. And so, why waste time here when we could jump straight to the meat of the discussion? The IT crowd has... two explicitly, you know... Um, the transphobic one is... And so we do jump forward. A little bit odd. The homophobic one is just straight up, like it's just straight up, like yeah, no, no, that's 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 just that's just like I I guess it's it's kind of it, it's somewhat of a representative of like you know if you know someone My would. Ella, I'm used to just learning math head down and watch a lot of. Fuck off! Brilliant. Sorry, it's not different. you. It's very just interactive. You're brilliant is just a very overpriced service. Do not get brilliant. It is. We do That's jump not forward good in a learn. few years to the. Sorry, moving on. Tea so, crap, of which there are a few elements that bear. Um. So one thing there. So the yeah, the, the homophobic episode is. I. It, you could defend it a slight bit by saying that the character who is gay is um not closeted, but like you know um has internalized homophobia, slightly. Like, slightly, like, not, not slightly, a lot, but, like, you know what I mean? Sort of, like, yeah, it's a bit, it's, uh, it's not very well done, and, you know, but, you know, I mean, for me, for me, no, for me, like, you know, just seem like the type he might even have in himself. Some mentioning, like, the gay jokes that are made during Are We Not Men, where Moss begins forcibly kissing Roy as part of a ploy to avoid the police's suspicion for a robbery, and the work outing, which features... To be fair, I think they would have maybe... I think that they would have been more comfortable doing that than if Moss or Roy was not, you know, man. Because I'm not sure what way you'd see it there, because that would seem like... Well, it would depend on who exactly is doing the sexual assault, because that is sexual assault. Uh, you know, because, you know, he, he, like, he, that is sexual assault. He... Doesn't it's not like oh this is a ploy we've both agreed he suddenly springs their arms up him yeah. eh. if they had made Jen them dating a guy named Philip who everybody is sure is gay due to them doing a whole bunch of queer stuff like not kissing women or going to see a gay musical called gay though it's 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 bloody hard 
to find non-gay musicals, so come on, that's that's barely a rainbow flag at all. And owning a gay magazine. All of which comes together with him admitting that he is gay, yes. And that he thought it could work with Jem because she looks kind of like a man. It's it's very lowbrow weird. humor from the show and yeah. sort of one of its weakest episodes, honestly. And it is interesting. It even got um. By the way, it even if you watch it on Channel Four, it even got like you know like sort of like this was made in 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 the in the early two thousands. We don't think this. We don't con- no. We don't just to make this very clear. This is ah. Uh, this is not not what we. Th- so just you know. So it, it it actually did get um. You know that that's that, that I think it's for a while as well. It was like no. Uh uh-uh. um. We know this. Is- Bad, like, or else, and let's be honest, like, for most of these media companies, it's like, oh no, no, we were fine with this, and then we got backlash, and we're like, yeah, probably best add this because we, we want to have it on our platform, but if we don't do this, yeah, we, we might get people boycotting the show. And even that's just like interesting that Graham Linehan would go to this watering hole of a guy being suspected to be gay by a woman they're on a date with twice. Odd that it happened more than once, though you could blame that on an originality, or you could blame it on the fact that Graham thinks this shit is hilarious. But those are the weak ep- Graham actually does not make a lot of shows. ...episodes for any kind of argument or attempt to get some background slash introspection on Graham Linehan as a person. No, no, no. Th- there's only one real essential that I want to consider, and to analyse more in depth for the thesis it's of the video essay. One. And that is the explicit trans episode itself. The speech, which has an actual trans character, and wherein the transness of that person is important and central to the secondary plot of the episode. It's, once again, though, it is, you know, the perception of a character is transphobic or the show is transphobic. And then the show is, let's be honest, honest. and the jokes made therein. So it all begins when Douglas Renner, played by the incomparable Matt Berry, a favourite actor of mine and thespian whose comedic stylings lend this strange, ridiculous gravitas to the characters that they play, who are often turned into these crazed versions of people anyway by the plot, and which Mm. he very much hams up, is interviewed by April Sheffield about his role as incredibly rich person and CEO of Renner Industries. Which leads to a date as April Which, is attractive and Douglas is a as he's a, he's a bloody hound he is. He will go after women on a regular basis, sometimes in creepy ways that involve roofies. Once again, I think that episode. I believe he didn't know. Then there's all these sort of things there where it's like, ah, yeah, oh, no, oh my god, <laughs> that's the character. Once again, there's the whole issue of, you know, platforming character and having that sort of thing. Does the show disagree with it? Kind of. Like, some other characters are like, nobody likes him, but, you know, he's not, like, meant to be a likable character. But, like, as well, yeah, he's pretty, pretty, yeah, not, you know. Yeah, that's another one of those IT crowd episodes that aged really poorly. Plot lines where Rohypnol is used to comedic effect by male comedy writers. Yikes. Yeah. But back to the episode at hand. Takes April out on a date, only for her to reveal during it that she used to be a man. As Douglas is so hyper-focused yeah. on the having of sex. However, thanks to some issues on Douglas's end, he hears her as saying that she used to be from Iran. Not- I've had a lot of hormone therapy and a number of operations. I'm really sorry. I, I hope you don't feel I deceived you. But I understand if, if you would rather I left. I don't care. Also, there are some weird oh laughs gosh. played when she reveals that she used to be a man. Uh, yeah. First hintings towards some trans... One thing. When you have a live studio audience, it is, you know, dangerous. Sometimes when they maybe laugh at certain points, whether you mean them to or not, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, that, that was a character being racist. You laughed at the racist joke. The joke that I wrote was them being, you know, you know, pushed out for the racism. Why did you laugh at the race? No, no, that part wasn't supposed to be fucking funny. You. Jesus, no, 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 why, you know, that's, yeah, it's, uh, it's anyone. 
I do believe they did record this. Phobia. The idea that the very notion of this revelation is a joke for the laugh track to play around. Yeah. Remember the laugh track. I don't think this is a laugh track. Necess- I don't, I'm not sure actually. The IT card was recorded in front of a studio audience partially at least. So are used by sitcoms to direct the audience. It was, yeah. When comedy is happening. They- it was partially recorded live. So, but you know, like sort of like live where in front of, I, which is by the way, very weird when they make mistakes and then they, it's in front of a studio audience. They tell you from the writers themselves, here is where you should be thinking there is a joke. But thanks to that mishearing, Douglas is okay with mm. the idea. Not seeing an issue with dating someone yeah, who used to Sam, be from Iran. Which to April makes him... It's a problem. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, mm. in comparison to the many men who have an issue of her being transgender. The many men who in the future will end up including Graham Linehan himself. Yeah, now, the activities um... that they get up to do kind of try to make April seem mannish. Try to imply some yeah, inherent manliness because of what she is talented at or comfortable doing. Like drinking beers or arm wrestling. Because comedy is the most common denominator of laziness when it comes yeah, it's to minority. Not great, is it? This is all just played as kind of sexy to Douglas. So heck, you know, whatever works, right? Mm. Unfortunately, yeah. this all comes to a head when Douglas reveals that he's really enjoyed the day spent with April, expressing how it seems strange as he normally flees right after he ejaculates in a woman. That's not great, is it? But something seems different about her. About this. Like there's some kind of inherent relationship difference with dating a trans woman, and a woman that a poonhound's dick like the one Douglas has can tell the masculine energy difference of. Yeah, you can sort of sense the essentialism at play here. Yeah. An essentialism mm. that absolutely exists in many of our franchises around gendered groups or transgender identities, because they were written by cis men who didn't bother thinking about or expanding their horizons on that front in regards to research or understanding. Yeah, it's... But the two reveal that they love each other, and everything seems pretty good and great, until Douglas also reveals that he thought she said I ran, and not a man, which April then swiftly corrects, to Douglas's great chagrin and horror. What? Douglas then freaks out. What? See, the thing is there is that Douglas is then explicitly written as a transphobe you know because why are you horrified you know like whatever it is about a person you liked them before why not why now you know why now is there alton lets the fear of this discovery take over his affection that he showed which then ends with him breaking up with her over it um. <laughs> That's not. Ha. 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 <laughs> Him trying his best to make it clear that it isn't because she's transgender, but it also been very clear at the same time that it is because of that, as April begs him to reconsider, declaring that she is a woman. It's honestly kind of heartbreaking right up yeah. until april punches him in the face which leads to an all-out brawl where keep in mind this uh this fella decides to beat a woman through a wall laps violence of a sort which is through a wall i guess more okay from douglas because we know that april is transgender Finally, the episode ends with Douglas staring at the article that April wrote on him, calling him an asshole, and he starts crying when he realises that it's not the same without April, that he made the wrong choice, and that he misses April to the raucous cacophony of the laugh track. But it's not the same! And that's the episode. Yeah. Now, this might be a weird take on all of this. One that might come as a shock to a few of you. But I don't think this is that bad. It's... The laugh track... Yeah, it's... 
the laugh track, the thing is, some of the some of the show is recorded live, so the laugh track is not necessarily the editors deciding. And then of course you have the war, the editors deciding and stuff and stuff like that. But like, it's not necessarily them. In some parts of the show, I know uh, were recorded in front of the studio audience, presumably. Although in that case, sometimes you have the whole laugh now sign uh, there, you know, and stuff like that. And then they're just like primed to laugh because you're supposed to be watching a comedy and you're sort of like hype and energy. Um, and there's all that. But, you know, it's it's overall, yeah, it's a bit, mm, I mean, yeah. Character is clearly, you know. Crack and the places in which it is placed the way that April is positioned as being masculine through her hobbies and some of the violence from her towards Douglas is certainly something that definitely think the violence is somewhat just like transphobic right? attitudes or subconscious bigotry but in a more general sense this is not that much of a transphobic episode the general theme of Douglas is that he is a bad guy who is not someone we should like yeah yeah Every episode is him doing another scheme or terrible thing like that Rufy shit. And the ending of him realising his screw-up over April does quite show this attitude that his own bigotry ruined one of the best relationships he had ever had with a woman. This would be quite the tale if it was separated from the sitcom setting that it's shoved into. And I certainly think that it's a far more sympathetic portrayal of a trans woman than in other shows like How I Met Your Mother or South Park. Yeah, I know this isn't what I'm looking for from South Park, but anyway, people want me to say. People don't want me to conclude that something Graham Linehan did and wrote, something that is created by such a reviled transphobe, doesn't really reflect that much of a transphobia. Or... One thing though, like Graham is uh, a weird, or at least man. nowhere near as much as the current stance does. But that's just the facts. It's somewhat accurate it doesn't make april out to be herself anything more than confident in who she is mm. she isn't tricking douglas in fact she openly reveals it to him before they sleep together on the date and the resolution is that douglas screwed up oh and she's also played by lucy montgomery a cis woman who as we have covered is not as great as having a trans woman played by a trans woman mm. but is still leagues better in what yeah, it's much better than going, and this is played by a cis man. This person, indeed. That's a great idea, isn't it? Because that's how that work. Mm, indeed. Mm, indeed. That's it. Because if we do that, that's fucking telling. That, that's telling. If you get the character who's a trans woman who's played by a cis man. What it says and portrays than having them played by a cis man. Yeah. So that's the episode. Because if that's you do that, crowd. come on. You gotta be honest. You gotta be honest at that point. No, 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 no. It's kind of similar when you've got like, you know, English people or Americans playing people of different nationalities. It's like, but why not just get someone who is from that country? You know, like, you know, even even someone who's, you know, been in in America for ten years, you know, just, you know, it just feels a bit weird when you have just someone like, yes, I'm, I'm from Texas, and I, uh, I'm gonna do the French character. Okay, but why, 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 why are you doing the French character? You know, it, oh, is the French character in the end of the uh, are they? Tech, no, tech, no, they're not? Okay. So. Mm. Which brings us around to answering that big question. The one that started us down this road. The question that I am totally not stalling for time here, as I try and remember desperately what the hell it was that I wrote. Uh, right. The question of if we could use Graham Linhan's past to discover the secrets to why he became one of the supervillains of the trans community in the UK and willingly destroyed his own life over his obsession with anti-trans activism to the degree that his career got nuked and his wife left him taking the kids. I mean, to be fair, like, Graham, what, what do you expect? You made a sh you've made shows where you satirise the church. You know... Amongst many other things. Who agrees with you? Like, yes, that's all the religious fundamentalists gone. You you definitely can't, you know, be like that. Because it's just like, yeah, great, sure, definitely. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
uh-huh. Th- that that entire show. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just there's not many areas to go for once you, you know, hit all those people out. You know, and that's one more reason why. Although Jake Rowling is a bit weird because like, Jake Rowling. Why have you got yourself like, mired in this? You're not a trans person. You're not a woman. Why have you made this your issue? Uh, well, the main reason is that women can't speak about this. Um, uh, uh, women like I, I, I. Yeah, fuck it. Man. I'll admit I'm not a great person to be in this conversation. I'm a. You're not a great person at all, Graham. Comedy writer. And. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm just saying, you're you people who you wrote with wrote write much better comedy than you. So based on what we've discussed, what we've seen through Father Ted and Black Books and IT Crowd. I really don't think we can. While there are certainly uncomfortable... No, I'm, I am I want to make this very clear. I think Graham Lennon wrote better comedy back in the day. I just think his comedy has declined. Moments in those comedies. Jokes that don't really land. Problematic content that targets minorities in a way that doesn't really say the progressive message that might have been intended. The overall theme is one that matches many other comedians mm. and writers of the same time period. Yeah. Many who went on to not become avid turfs, and in fact tried to do better, like Seth MacFarlane, who initially responded poorly mm, yeah. to the criticisms of trans representation in Family Guy, but has since included a pretty respectful and well-written piece of trans representation within the Orville. And what mm. Graham Linehan wrote and created was nowhere near as openly toxic or vile as what Seth MacFarlane did. And yet, one of them spiralled further and further into transphobia in response. Yeah, I mean, I think once again, partially, you know, like... ...to criticism. It's... If anything, Graham Linehan's career doesn't give us clues towards how he ended up. It doesn't give us a clear framework for warning signs and red flags. Or, at least... It doesn't give us that for searching people's past history in their content creation. While Graham's work yeah. might not be the solution to that question, the answer that we're searching for, it does mean and it does encourage us to look elsewhere because the transphobic roots are not there. Oh my. It's a shame that all these Irish history and word of art just. Something about them. Something about them. So, anyway, yeah. So, YouTube, it's your turn to play the video. You know. An essential thing to understand mm. about Graham Linehan is how much of his story mirrors another famous anti-trans celebrity. One who far outweighs him in wealth and fame and the oh, protection yes. far by that stand far 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 billionaire i also found it very funny we were like oh no her castle is small though it's like right but you defend okay that's weird <laughs> why do they live in a castle just by the way they live in a castle and that's not because like you you know that's not because like it's 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 kind of like maybe a family thing and you can't really sell it because it's like costs a bunch to upkeep and like that. Then um if you bought one, I mean, slightly weird, but anyway. Seeing as you know, especially when you write Baptist, books about JK slavery, Rowling. being okay. Because both of them dealt with the same thing at different times. Namely, that they faced backlash and criticism from people for transphobia in their writings or actions. Yes, I believe that that has a certain... I mean, when you see, though, like, J.K. Browning has a history, though, of certain other uh, weird sort of, you know... For Graham Linehan, it was when The Speech things. was rerun on TV in 2013 and was subsequently pulled after outrage about the transphobic elements that were present in it. Transphobic elements that Graham denied and denied were indicative of any kind of transphobia in himself. Wait. Self, which is a dangerous position to take. You should always be introspective about the bigotries that you might have that you don't recognise. That's the best way to evolve and change a person. If you mm. think that you're perfect and fine and there's nothing wrong with you, that's more worrying. Yeah, like just... You know... Yeah, you know, it's 
You know, I, I mean, it's one thing, right, if you're just a general person in the population who doesn't really have enough time and all that. But if you're actively, you know, going to talk about it, you're going to actually platform and uh, going to actually, you're someone who is in the public media space, do take a moment. Because, like, you know, just kind of reflect on you. For J.K. Rowling, it was when she had her middle-aged moment of liking a turf tweet that was defending a turf for making her workplace a hostile environment for trans employees and trans customers. This line. Before swimming, I was also in Israel. Oh, I wonder, I wonder, JK. Maybe, perhaps, it was more than just stating that sex is real, seeing as that isn't even like, that isn't even like, if someone just said that, you wouldn't think that's transphobic. You wouldn't even think that was like, to do with trans people at all, like, sex is real. Yes, some people do have sex. Uh, okay, and? Yeah, you know, how is that? You know, you know, maybe maybe something else was said. In both cases, the parties involved refused to see what they did as a problem. And because they or even as the incorrect. ...issue with their behaviour, or downplayed it, and didn't see it as really a proper reflection of their attitude. No, I mean, like, saying that that's what she said is not true, okay? If you simplify something, you can't just say, well, no, 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 but, but even if people, even if you think that, you know, this group should be discriminated against, you are, in actual fact, lying. That's not what was said. That's not what occurred. So, you know, you know, like, what I'm saying is, if, let's say, uh, a boss, uh, you find your boss is uh, a little bit creepy around kids, so you murder your boss. If someone was to tweet after you go to prison, oh, and, and they go for pri to prison for, for, for stating that children exist. No, that wasn't the reason. No, that was because they murdered somebody. That, that was the reason, you know? So... You know, even if you think that the thing is perfectly okay, that they did, you are saying something which they didn't. That's not the reason that they were fired. That's not the reason they went to prison. So you are, in actual fact, lying. You are misinterpreting the whole thing. So that means that even if you think that what happened there was wrong, even if that is the case, you're still telling him truth. So, you know. It's so only that there's transphobia there, it's just, it's just lying there. The criticism of them Doing propaganda. came off as hatred and vindictive more than constructive. But, unlike Seth MacFarlane, rather than just cooling down and stepping away from the trans topic or issue for a bit, instead both were courted by TERFs due to this backlash. A great video to... So, I'm going to read some of these. Hi, Graeme. Every time I discuss my sexuality with a journalist, my words get twisted. So when I speak about it, oh, it will be my, it will, it will be in my words and my terms, not with a journalist who will make it so offensive and reductive, any clip it heavy as possible. I deserve time to run this. And goes. I used to believe, believe me, I used to think that myself, but that is about using the word queer to describe yourself. That's what I mean by appropriate. I'm a queer person, you're a twat. That's how we both identify. LOL, you're a straight twat, says Graham. And then JK says, Many health professionals are concerned that young girls are struggling with their mental health and are being shunted towards hormones and surgery, when this may not be in their best interest. 4-11. Or slash 11, I don't know. So yeah. Check out about this is Kaylin Conrad's series about TERFs and their recruitment habits. And it's very fascinating to consider it in regards to its relation to both cults and online alt-right groups. Both find Ow. those who've been isolated via some event during their life that caused them to feel attacked or hurt, and then they loved bombed them or engaged in positively propping them Yeah, I mean them up. Telling them that they weren't wrong, that in fact it was the haters who were wrong. And also, here are more studies and surveys. 
phase of content taken out of context that reassure the points or fears that are expressed and in fact I mean not all of them are, are, are taken out of context some of them are just like bullshit like yes and this one says that leaves when you're right about leaves when you're around leaves you can have an increased chance in vomiting because we did a study around people who vomited and 55% of them had walked at least two kilometers next to a leaf before, at least five weeks before. So there, proof. Definitely not scientifically inaccurate at all. No, no, not at all. Except no, that that's completely inaccurate. So you do have scientific studies that are that are there. They're not taken out of context. They're just not scientific. Like yeah, this study was done on two people. Um, okay, so. Blame them. In fact, encourage worse ideas. They are courted and coaxed, and it works especially well when your ego has been hurt by your identity being called yeah. into question. Especially in if this, you're very, you know. In this case, both Graham Linehan and J.K. Rowling's allyship or stance of the queer community from trans people. And with that pushing, with that support from people who are enabling the worst attitudes that you have, because they see you as a target to obtain for their movement, you slip up again. You say something else transphobic, and the backlash gets bigger, mm. which leads to more positivity from those groups encouraging you. Mm, yeah. It's like this perfect feedback cycle, where nobody likes to hear negative things about themselves, nobody likes to take mm. criticism, especially when they think they're in the right, and so they yeah. start... Yeah. ...self-isolating, listening more and more to the people who only affirm them who provide no counterpoints at all, and dismissing all the voices in contrast as haters, or the enemy, or part of the problem, or bought figures, or in some big conspiracy, yes. or secret puppeteering, or tricked by something behind the scenes. Whatever it is, all those people against you are villains and victims and not worth your time. And so you keep posting things. You keep saying and doing the stuff that gets the group who have your back to cheer for you. And damn the consequences, because everyone likes having cheerleaders who do their best to shield you from considering... I think the problem with Graham is that Graham is like, you know... ...the criticism levied at you. He likes you. And eventually, after you're isolated from anyone with a difference in opinion, when you've ruined your image and who you are to the point that the only group that will accept you is that... Like, this statement. Um... Transphobic activism, I think you mean. Like just... Then you have no way to go back. At that point, you're suckered in, and there's no escape. Oh, <laughs> Left you cancelled and broke. Buddy, you've written on one of the most successful shows in Channel 4. I, I, you should not be broke. Whatever that group wants to become your life, becomes your life. Becomes your new identity. Your wife could leave you. Your bosses and your co-workers could stop engaging with you. Your friends and the people you used to love could walk away. And you would just think they've been compromised. That they're too scared to speak the truth. The scary thing about the Graham Linehan story and the J.K. Rowling one by proxy is not that he was always this massive transphobe and that was where he was going to end up is as clear as day. But that it wasn't always obvious that he could have gone a very different direction, but that this mm. honestly pretty normal comedy writer who was kind of progressive, but not really that... After today's news, that the Tories are about to privatise everything, I did a little mixtape to cheer myself up. ...progressive, like a lot of cis straight white men, you know, they, they vote left, but they don't really care about all the minorities enough to try and yeah. get involved in understanding them at a ground level. You know, some, some like, you know, uh, you know, sort of thing like, yeah, it's the sort of thing of like, oh, don't you worry, I won't beat you to death. I will watch on as others do, though. So, what? Okay, is that bad? I... <laughs> watch on me, it's bad. I, you know, it's bad. 
Are you dense? Like, what do you what? What do you think is bad? You, just, you know. This man was transformed by a group of people who came to his side to use him in the long term as a celebrity for their movement. Is Graham a celebrity? I I don't think he is. Like. It's once again those sort of things like writers are, are in the unfortunate position that a lot of them are not celebrities. They're celebrities in the industry. If you're in the industry, you know them. But like, a lot of people are just like, ah, it's what? Oh, they wrote for that really famous show. I do not know that, you know? That sort of thing. Like, there are some that are well known, but for a lot of them, it's like, what? They, they wrote for Marvel? What? For all those? They wrote for like five Marvel movies? And, and what, what? All these franchises they wrote for? Oh, gee, I, I did not know that. And yeah, it's it, it's a problem. And in my case, that that can actually affect a writer because it makes it harder to get contracts. Because unless you're unless you're actually famous, even if you wrote a bunch of stuff, unlike an actor, you know they're like, uh, okay, but but your work isn't good quality though. Like you're like the actor who's kind of bad at acting it doesn't really matter because they're famous. They'll bring in people into and buying their buying their stuff. But a writer is just like that, like, right? Like okay, yeah. You know. So, Graham is not that famous, you know. Anyway, back to the video. Into an aggressive and unrecognisable extremist whose hatred of trans people dwarfs any other part of who he used to be. But has, has stepping in made the debate any better? I mean, a lot of people say that the language you've used, some of the dismissive terms that you've bandied about have actually increased the toxicity of this can, debate. Can you give me an example? Yes, you can... You, yeah, I'll, I'll give you several if you want. <laughs> so, um, what about comparing people in the trans debate to speaking out against Nazis? I mean, that's pretty extreme. Well... There's a couple of parallels. One is that at the moment, you know the Nazis. Uh, you know the Nazis uh, put trans people in in camps, buddy. You know, they, you know they did that, right? So like, I feel like if you were like, yes, yes, see Nazis, this is uh, this is they would be like, oh, oh, good, good. You spotted the trans person. Okay, put them in the camp. That that that's what would happen there, Graham. You know, that would happen. So maybe. <laughs> It's like a little bit, you know, you're on the side of a Nazi then, if that's what you're saying. It's basic um, history. Children are uh, basically being experimented on with uh, uh, puberty blockers. Uh, not trans experimentation. For instance, oh, come on, you're not seriously trying to say that children going to the doctor and saying that they're worried about their gender is akin to children being experimented on in Nazi I, I'm concentration afraid, camps. I'm, I'm afraid I am. It's like. Well, Graham, you have a very, very poor understanding of history then. Because once again, if you were like, this person is a trans person, the Nazis would have most likely liked you. They would be like, oh, good person. Just like, you know, if you were like, this person, look, this person underneath the floorboards is you. Yeah, they would take that person away. Do you understand, Graham? They kind of would like you. The Nazis would, is what I'm saying. So maybe tone down on the whole comparison of the Nazis because it makes you sound like you're a little bit like, you know, like saying you're, you're a Nazi, you know? He got hit by that oil from Prometheus. Wait, nobody watched that. Um, it's like he got hit by that oil from Phyrexia. Wait, that's not a universal pop culture reference either. Think, think, think. I just watched so much. Um, it's it's like there. he got noughted by Xenonaut. Yeah, everyone knows that one. No. And that, I think, is the true lesson here. The true thing to take away. A lot of people, regular people with basic flaws and subconscious bigotries mm. can very easily be tied. I think it is partially down to uh, similar to but mm, a little little bit harsher than like homophobia how if you don't if you don't know anyone in a group because the group is pushed down like you shut the fuck up about your existence then you sort of don't know anything and because you're not educated you just sort of like will mop up education from anywhere and well now we have the internet so it's like yeah you can have any official sounding source and it's like, but this is what the Institute for Definitely Not Transphobic People said. It's like, that's funded by a Nazi body. That, that the same person also funded uh, an anti, uh, anti, you know, uh, uh, anti homosexual group and also funded an anti, you know, feminism group. So yeah, you might want to be more careful where you get your sources from because some of them are, you know, 
that's the thing. Like it's 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 a problematic thing where like when you don't know anything about a group, then you are seeking out education there, and that is probably the thing which is why you should be a little bit cautious and also just like you know don't just sort of lap up you know what your you know your uh into sources that are these groups well they end up thinking they've become part of a trans war and there's all ties to reality and to having identity outside of that it mm. could happen to almost everybody and there's no clear way of seeing it until the problems start popping up. Until a person starts taking yeah. criticism the wrong way. Yeah. And having it be used to slowly twist them into echo chambers that reflect the worst parts of them back at themselves for encouragement. Yeah. Oh, my. Wonderful YouTube filled with ads. And play. There we are. Play. YouTube. So that's the big conclusion to the question. That Graham Linehan and who you became is not so easily read within the work that he did. And it's more of a reflection of the darker path that one can take when faced mm. with criticism for the actions or writing that you engaged with. Yeah. I think it's important to remember that because it would be easier to act as if he was always this transphobic. That all the stuff that he ever made is filled with who he is right now. And not that the comedy he did is mostly fine. A little bit low-hanging and a little bit sometimes making bad episodes filled with very, very awkward comedy. Like that time that they made fun of a man getting sexually harassed. Yeah, that that's an IT Crowd episode that honestly should be way more remembered for how <laughs> yeah, terrible it was uh... than the trans one. <laughs> Liking the IT Crowd or Black Books or Father Ted. Where did the man kiss you? Oh, okay, that's, um, that's, that's, uh, okay, that's, mm, indeed. Ted doesn't make you a transphobe, like Graham Linehan, because those shows themselves didn't make him a transphobe. The criticism of him didn't make him a transphobe either. It was his own choices, and the encouragement of transphobic groups who wanted to recruit him into their own personal war, funded by right-wing organisations out of America, mm. The pushed great yeah Linehan. like you'll see this like you know like have you ever heard of turning point usa their uh offshoot for the uk is fucking weird to be who he is today and the person who has been most punished for those choices is, is actually it's kind of a toss-up between the trans women that he harasses and directs hate towards to the cheers of the frankly vile and blood-baying crowd that he has become inextricably linked to and Graham himself. Because he killed his career. He killed his marriage. I mean, my thing though is, he didn't really kill his career. Because there are trans people who get shows. Now, their shows mostly based off of the directors and, and, and you know producers being transphobic. But they get shows. They get movies. They get stuff. So I don't think he necessarily killed his career. I think his career was doing a decline. It was in decline, like he made Father Ted, that was pushed up, although the, the, his co-writer kind of did a better job, so you know. And then he made Black Box, it was a little bit lower, a little bit fairly successful, but you know, still successful enough. Uh, and then made the IQ, that was very successful, but then sort of like just dropped down. Like, when you actually look at his career, it's like, you know, you know. So like, sorry, so here we have, you know, Graham Lennon's IMBD page, which is not actually a great page. IMBD is not actually really good to use, but like you know, you have here like you know your um your sort of uh, track here, like you know Motherland is you know kind of a no offense, meant like a bit of a basic show. I uh, kind of so strong. I don't know about that. Um, but you know that's then you. Like the the so the T crowd ends in twenty thirteen and it's basically you know, and yeah it's it's sort of you know it's not exactly not much if you know what I mean you know not much like if the, they stick out with like the father Ted you know 
Most of like these are big stuff, and then sort of just declines, you know. Just sort of it's a downward turn for his career, really. It's kind of all in the way, you know. It's like, yeah, it's a show, but. Anyway, back to the video. So yeah. yeah, all in all, I think that Graham sort of had a decline in career anyway, and this was just the thing that like killed it in the end because like now no one really wanted to deal with him, you know. And it, as well, he wasn't exactly, you know, rich. He has become like Douglas Reynolds at the end of the speech, a sad man crying in his bed alone, forced into this by the bigotry that he allowed to ruin the good things in his life. I mean, there are a few things within the, the media that Graham has apparently created that Mr. Lennon has uh, managed to fall into. You Don't know? be like Graham. And also, keep your eyes peeled for when a celebrity starts having the same thing happen, when they get criticised and immediately surrounded by sycophants who support everything they say and push them to say even more bigoted stuff and protect their ego from the tarnishing. Because I think a celebrity should just like pretend at some point, just like pretend that someone is has has said something about them, you know. Just just to see who comes running. That's how it starts. Anyway, I hope you learned something from this video, or that you enjoyed what you watched. If you are Graham himself, like, dude, it's it's never too late to change. Mm -hmm. It's never too late to realize that what you're doing is madness. That you've been consumed by I don't think you should say it's madness. It's just kind of like stupidity, you know? Single group to an unhealthy level. I'm not even saying here that you've got to flip to being pro trans. Just get different hobbies. Unlink yourself from those turf groups for a bit and try and live a life outside of that, frankly, cult that has taken over. I don't know if you'll listen, and actually, knowing what I know about cults, you probably woke that's part of how they work i mean look at scientology um, yeah i to make very clear here that scientology is not a cult can they actually get me they are a cult they're a horrifying cult that i think yeah you know i mean so is most religion let's be honest you know most religion is a cult i'm sorry if you're religious but like you know, organized wise is mostly mostly it's a cult because it, it kind of it kind of makes sense like if you're if you're a person who's high up in a religion like you know you can make a lot of money if you just shifted things you know has been involved in the cover up of like murders and stuff so you know screw Scientology as well as you know the turfs but look to look Graham give it a shot for mm. a few months not for me. Not for the trans people of the UK, well, that would help a lot, but for yourself. Just see yeah. what it's like. Just take a step back, don't think about, don't engage with, don't look at anything that's linked to the trans issue or whatever, or debate, or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Step back from it the trans talks. Just, you know, try and be yourself again, because maybe the wife will come back. Regardless, if you really like what I've done and, and want to do more than just I mean, liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting about how this channel deserves more views, presumably he was a bit of a prick anyway. Like you know, I get it. I I also think I deserve more views too. Then you can support. Me. I mean, yeah, yeah. Me financially by going to my Patreon or Ko-fi. It's really valuable for helping me to pay for the essentials of living. The I think essentials that allow is... me to a bit odd. Uh, I do wonder, like, you know, you see the likes of people being like, no, YouTube needs to take the amount of money they, they do. It's like, do they, though? Because, do they? Do they really? Because it kind of seems like, you know, they don't. You know? Because, like, Patreon offers, like, a 7%. They, they take, like, 7%. YouTube is like, no, we'll take 40. Okay. Wait, is it 30 or 40? I'm not sure. One of the two. I think it might be there. To make these videos at such an alarming 
great without having to worry about food, housing, and electricity. All the things that I need to be able yeah. to keep fighting the trans war on the trenches. Grr. The names of those who do support me and support the right side during this brutal combat should be flying mm. past the screen right now. God bless these brave warriors for their contributions to the effort. And I cannot keep this bit up because it's ridiculous to refer to it like this. It's ridiculous to call it a trans war. It's almost as bad as calling it the trans debate. Like what yeah. kind of imagery are we trying to evoke? Yeah, it's like, oh yeah. Should these people be executed for being themselves? Or should they not? You decide. Woo! Is it thumb up or is it down? The emperor says, where is the, what's the crowd going? Yeah, it's, no, actually, that's not, you should, no, 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 no. Just let people live, you know. And don't be like, well, you can live, but you can't be your, okay, but then what's the fucking, like, yeah, anyway, just, you know. Ah, my. What the makes trans people into literally like enemies or into something that we can like toss words over and around anyway thank you for watching this video and i hope you have a great day thank even you. you graham I, I hope that you have a great day away from twitter just step back for a bit don't look at any of that stuff just just go outside i mean to be fair i mean the modern day, you know, Graham. So if you stay on Twitter, who knows? You might get fucking scammed by a little, uh, little crypto bot. It's like, yeah, you can remove trans people with just two hundred dollars in Bitcoin. Go ahead, Graham. S spend the money. It's definitely not a scam. Ugh, God. Go hang out with some friends that aren't going to just talk to you about only trans stuff. Go hang out with other friends. Get into something. Does like he have any? Gathering. It's a fun hobby. There's also Does he have any turfs in that too, so you can collect some turf cards as well. God, you just can't get away from it, can you? Yeah. Well, that's Graham. At the end of the day, my opinion on Graham is that he's... You know, not the best person, but generally speaking, most Irish people who emigrate and then become fairly successful are not the best. Um, I, as I said in the past, I think it's just something about like how like you know, in 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 general, celebrities are like some of the worst people on the platform. I don't know what's that about. Probably because like there's a couple of reasons. Like you know, people who are involved in these industries are oftentimes like very bad people. But also, just in general, like I guess it makes sense just to hang around those kind of people and then you know it's like you know they're 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 generally um they're generally a lot less likely to like unionize and stuff like that because it's like oh well graham would you like to unionize or would you like to discriminate against trans people you gotta decide <laughs> you know and uh, uh it's it's weird but that that's the way it is and so just in general i would say beware of celebrities most of them are Pretty bad people. But anyway, you can check out the channel, not my channel, their channel, in the description and the original video and the Patreon. Hopefully, that should be there as well. So, shlon to you. Shlon to you. And fuck you, Graham. Fuck you. As usual, typical person who goes off and makes their fortune. You're a bit of a prick. <laughs>